Russell, aka Bell and Circuit, here with a beat breakdown of April's beat, which, if you'll recall, involved post rock drummers making a beat record, a jazz samba record from the 60s a collection of recordings of bells from East Germany, and some nuns making a homemade record of devotional songs in their convent from Chicago, I believe. So we're gonna go through those tracks, how I put it together. Thanks for everyone coming along and following, subscribing to the channel watching the videos, appreciate it. If you have suggestions about other things you'd like to see, let me know. If you have questions about things that I'm doing, techniques that I'm using, tools that I'm using, let me know. So, let's get into it. Here we go. So, first thing I guess we'll talk about the drums. I had three different drum loops that I got off the, that I sampled off the post-rock drummer beat record. So there's that one. There's that one. So most of those were just two or four bar loops. Sliced them up slightly to give some fills or intros. Little roll going into the beat there. So nothing too crazy there. You'll notice that there is some pretty aggressive EQ where the low end is pulled way out. So. I'm removing a lot of the bass frequencies. And the reason for that is that I have a supplemental kick track um, like that. I'm using a pretty aggressive distorted kick sample. Instead of just trying to figure out where all the kick hits were, the easiest way to do that is uh, convert drums to new MIDI track. And that will create a new track with a generic drum kit of its own choosing. Uh, and then you'll see all the, all the hits are in there. So if you play that, with really shitty drum sounds, uh, I was just interested in the kick drum, so we can delete the hi-hat, we can delete the snare, and then I took that pattern, put it in, and have all I have in this drum rack is a single distorted kick. Obviously, I edited that. I didn't use all of the hits. I, I, I basically just chopped it up to emphasize the hits that I wanted. So this is probably more like what that pattern sounded like than when I pulled it out. So you can hear some pretty interesting effects. I kind of used that heavily rhythmic kick drum pattern as fills, essentially. So if we look at the automation, I'm automating a bunch of stuff for those, essentially to turn those kicks into rolls. So I'm EQing or I'm doing some heavy EQing, I'm using an auto filter, I'm using a saturator, I'm using um, volume automation. So you end up getting what we just heard there and in context it acts more like a fill. So you get something like this. Das Glockenspiel des this clack sound that I got 
that um, I stretched pretty aggressively and left a lot of the artifacts in there. I, I, I kept it on beats mode. Normally you don't want that and you'd want to put some, you'd want to use something like Complex or Compax Pro. Com complex or Compax, easy for you to say. Complex or Complex Pro. Um, but here I left it on beats and then you get this weird artifacts, especially at the end. So if you listen, you'll hear it. So that sounds really shitty on its own, but sounds pretty cool in context. Das Glockenspiel des Dresdenzwerts. Das Glock. So it's subtle, but uh, that's some of the fun kinds of things. Then we also have this slowdown um, bit that I sampled that. Just sounds ridiculous, but pretty cool as sort of an extra layer and fill. rumbling in there before and I moved it so that the kick, the, the percussive hits on there line up with some of the actual kick drum uh, so it, it makes a little more sense and isn't too chaotic. This is what we got for the bass. Which is super cool. Um, we look at the processing a little bit here you'll notice that again there's some really pretty drastic EQing take that off what I was trying to do is get rid of the rest of the drums essentially that percussion behind it and then it's side chained to the kick just to uh, give it a little more oomph um, so that's what we get. Das Glockenspiel des Dresdenzwerts. So some of the melodic elements. We had the guitar. Sounds like this. It actually had a nice kind of percuss percussion shuffle behind the scenes uh, there, which worked out pretty well unintentionally. Uh, we also have the flute thing and uh, again that also has some tambourine in it which uh, when you bring in the rest of the track just adds that uh, kind of high information uh, exciting the frequencies. For the vocals, two vocal tracks panned left and right. One uh, of the nun singing la la la. la la la. And the other of a single held note. And so those are kind of um, always played together. So we had the bells of East Germany. Uh, this is what the bell sounds like with no processing. So there's some EQ on there to clean up some of the low end mud. And then we're sending it to my um, favorite custom send rack that I made which is this long ambience dub and Ableton's fade to gray effect which I love. I use it on everything. Check it out if you haven't. That is pretty much it with the exception of Das Glockenspiel des Dresdener Zwingers. Das Glockenspiel. So put it all together you get a pretty weird track that I quite enjoy. See you next time.